Okay, it's looking to be about that time. Uh, welcome to the presentation on Vision Solutions for MedTech. Uh, I'm Matthias Fowler, the uh, Marketing Manager here at Mechatronic Solutions, and I'm joined today by Ryan Marty, Product Manager for Industrial and Smart Cameras from Omron Automation Americas. If you have any questions during the presentation, be sure to leave them in the Q&A, and we will answer them after the presentation is concluded. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Matt. I appreciate the time, and hopefully everyone will get something pretty uh, great out of this presentation. So as Matt had said, my name is Ryan Marty. I am the product manager over here at Omron Automation Americas for industrial cameras and smart cameras. Today, I wanna to talk to everyone about vision solutions in med tech. When we say med tech, we also uh, can translate that to mean life sciences. So in this presentation, you're gonna see me refer to this as life sciences most often, but they're really an interchangeable term here. Quick look at the agenda of what we're gonna be looking at today. So I wanna go over some pretty basics of machine vision in the life sciences industries, take a look at a definition of what we consider to be machine vision, some common machine vision solutions, a look at laboratory automation and how that fits in with machine vision and some current trends in vision as a whole. Afterwards, we'll actually start digging into some of the meat and some of the stuff that I know everyone likes a little more, which is some really common applications that we see in life sciences. We'll look at some very general applications, then we'll do a pretty good dive on microscopy, some quality inspection, collaborative lab automation, and high-speed code rating with a couple success stories peppered in there to really showcase what we can do in the industry. So first, let's just make sure we're all on the same page. And I'm sure most of you are like, well, we already know what machine vision is, Ryan. Why are you bothering this? Well, because I like to make sure that we're all on the same page of understanding what we consider to be machine vision. And there's a lot of definitions out there, but I really like a very succinct, easy way to define something. So my favorite definition of machine vision is the automated extraction of useful information from digital images. That's it. It's simple, right? We take a picture and we get some sort of information out of it to do something. And that's all it is. We have three steps to it, right? Image acquisition, image analysis, and data processing. Now, how that translates into life sciences can be a little interesting, right? I don't want to get all preachy here, but oftentimes when we use machine vision in life sciences, we're actually using our technology to help make the world a better place to live, to improve the lives of people in it. And this isn't just something I say to use some buzzwords about making the world a better place, but it also is true. With machine vision and life sciences, we can help doctors and researchers and lab techs learn more from images of, and data than they have in the past. So one example we'll actually talk about later, which is a great uh, showcase of this, is in the microscopy field, we can use machine vision to predetermine whether or not a cell is cancerous before it even could get to a doctor to look at. And what that does is that helps filter out uh, bad tests, for instance, and it helps make the time of our extremely expertised professionals more useful, right? We're not wasting time of these doctors and researchers because we can do this with our products. So how does machine vision work? Machine vision, it's really important to know, is not a single product. Here at Omron, we sell a lot of machine vision products, right? We sell cameras, we sell IPCs, we've got lights, we've got lensing, and we've got software, but we wouldn't call one of those individually machine vision. Machine vision is a conglomeration of all those technologies being used together. In order to have machine vision, you have to have a camera. This can be a smart camera like our FHV7 or our F430 Microhawk system, or this can be an industrial camera like our Omron Centec Gigi Vision line, for instance. And then you need to be able to process. This can be done on an FH controller, an IPC, an HMI, a multitude of products that's actually holding the software and doing those processes we need done for machine vision. In the case of a smart camera like FHV7, of course, that's being done on board, which is taking less stress away from the uh, designer, right? Then we need to have optics. You can't have a camera without a lens. It's the number one rule. And lighting, right? If you talk to most vision engineers, one of the things they'll tell you is the most difficult and the most detailed part of machine vision is always lighting. Most of the problems that we've got with machine vision, we can solve with lights. 
Do you have the proper contrast? Is your ambient lighting okay? All of this is important in putting together a machine vision solution. And lastly, you have to have the software. All of this that we've put together is not very useful unless we have a software to actually process the image data that we're producing. Softwares can range anything from Omron's AutoVision platform to, for instance, the FC Panda series with our FH, and they all can do different things, right? We might have one software that's really good at doing a specific task that we want to use over and over again, right? I don't want to go through this too much in detail. Everyone will have access to this presentation later, but this is just a really great example of how machine vision is truly set up. And it really goes into these three steps, right? We have capture. We can see a camera with a lens using light to take an image from a scene. Process, that data is being sent over to some sort of uh, processor that's actually starting to make that data into something useful. And then we have analyze. The software is actually starting to do a task. So if we're taking a picture of a, a slide of cells, process that image, and then we're analyzing to say which cells are healthy and which cells are not. Very simple way to look at it. So what are some common machine vision solutions we see today? And there are tons of them. We could have a two hour presentation of me just literally listing off applications for machine visions and life sciences. Nobody wants that, right? Excel sheets, that's what those are for. But one of three of the big ones we really wanna focus on are quality control, data accuracy, and traceability. And when we talk about traceability for machine vision, mostly we are talking about, of course, that uh, image part, right? Traceability is such a huge term for multiple different products working together for these life science companies. But when we talk about traceability with machine vision, we're talking a lot about barcode reading, uh, label verification, and that sort of thing. Laboratory automation. Nowadays, labs are being pushed more than ever to push themselves towards full automation. Now, the ideal lab of the future is a 24-7 lab that is run almost completely by machine vision, robotics, automation, working together as one symbiotic unit that does not need a lot of human interaction. The reality of that is we're not there quite yet, but there are some things that are pushing us closer and closer to that fully realized laboratory of the future. One of the biggest reasons we want to push towards that is lower error rate with no variability. I don't know about you guys, but Monday morning, I'm often a lot more drowsy than I, than I am Thursday afternoon, right? So humans have a lot of errors that we produce. Even the most perfect of us still is wrong sometimes. But with automation, we can lower that error rate, especially around different types of tests. You might have one lab, for instance, that handles tests that come from all around the US. One doctor's office might actually do their uh, samples a slightly different way from another office. And by having machine vision identify, categorize, and be able to take care of this, we can decrease that error rate. The next uh, reason is, of course, efficiency and throughput. Utilizing machine vision and automation, we can actually make it so the human element is more efficient and more useful during the process, not doing meaningless tasks, for instance. So we might have in the case of a robot, and we'll actually talk about a very similar example of this later, a robot might be picking up a very small sample from an area, taking it to another area, and putting it into a machine to run a task. That robot doesn't have to do other things, it can be used for a single task, which means that once that sample is immediately ready, the robot can immediately take it and move it over there. This increases efficiency, and it lets us do more samples and more data quicker. The big one that everyone is dealing with right now, and it's no shock to anyone, is labor shortages. And one industry that is being hit the hardest with this is laboratories. Right now, the retirement rate for laboratory techs is significantly higher than the rate of new entries into the field. So real simple math, if that keeps happening, you're gonna run out of qualified lab techs to do the work we need done. So without having automation, we're not gonna reach what we need to reach. And then finally, safety and compliance. 
With automation, we are able to drive a better level of safety and a better level of compliance, especially when we talk about certain required compliances through government agencies and things like that. Automation lets us really set exactly what's going to happen. You're never worried about a robot showing up after having an all-nighter, right? That robot's always going to work the way it needs to work. So some trends. And the first trend I want to talk about in machine vision is really one of my personal favorite ones right now. And it is dealing with visual spectrums. Typically, in machine vision, we do all of our analysis on the normal wavelength spectrum, right? The type of viewing that we see through our eyes every single day. But utilizing different types of sensors and different wavelengths, we can actually achieve all sorts of new ways to do machine vision. And I'm going to talk about three cases today, and I'm going to really go into deep a little bit about shortwave infrared. But the first one is ultraviolet. So ultraviolet, we all know, not as just a bad movie from the early 2000s, but what we see from the sun, right? But that can also be utilized as a way to see different bruises, for instance, on fruit that we could not see through a normal light. So as we look here, we can see some of these pears have different texture and different uh, bruising on them than what we can see normally. The next one here is infrared. So infrared is probably the most common use of a visual spectrum that we see in the uh, today. This is very popularized by trail cams, right? If you're a hunter or if you like doing hiking, you might set up trail cams that can see an infrared. Um, the best way to describe infrared, I'm going to do another pop culture reference here, is a, one of my personal favorite movies from the 80s, Predator, right? When he's looking through the forest, he's seeing an infrared, seeing heat signatures off of objects. That way we can tell what's going on. Used in machine vision, this can be extremely useful when looking at boards on an assembly line because we could see what parts of the board have certain levels of heat applied to them that might not be appropriate for that assembly. And then lastly is shortwave infrared. And in shortwave infrared, we're actually going to go into a little bit more depth here, but what we really want to talk about is how shortwave infrared sees through a different way than what everything else does. And I have some examples to show just how this works. So the first one here, we have a very common agricultural application of rice sorting. And with a standard visual spectrum camera, we would be looking at this and you can kind of start to determine that maybe some of this rice is a slightly different color, right? Why is that kernel of rice darker than the rest? I don't quite tell. And it's hard for machine vision and cameras to detect things that are very close together in color. When we wanna do machine vision, we wanna have contrast. The more contrast we have, the easier it is to do our tasks. Utilizing shortwave infrared, we can actually see in this image to the right here that we have resin mixed in with the rice. So those lightly colored uh, kernels that we see here are actually resin. In doing this, we can help to sort our, out particulates and unwanted product inside of our food. This goes back to, right, we're helping to make the world a little bit better by creating more ways to keep people safe. The next one here is a very simple explanation of how we can use shortwave infrared to see not just the fill level of a bottle, but also if that bottle is leaking. So if we have a pharmaceutical company that is developing, let's say, a, a stomach medicine or something, right? We could say that if you wanted to inspect to make sure that all those bottles are the exact same level, no matter what the outside of the container is, we can use shortwave infrared to see that liquid level and also detect if there's any problem. On the image on the left, we can kind of see the droplets of water or alcohol, sorry, uh, with our human eye, but a camera is not going to really be able to detect that. Utilizing shortwave infrared, we can clearly see hey, this bottle is leaking, this is a bad bottle, get it off the assembly line. And my final example here of shortwave infrared, which is I think one of the cooler ones here, is this is the same rooftop in Japan over by our Omron Sentech factory. And this is an image taken side by side utilizing a standard visual spectrum camera and a shortwave infrared camera. And one of the things that we can do with shortwave infrared is we can remove particulates and haze from images in order to see the environment clearer. 
So what this means in laboratory automation and life sciences is we can use shortwave infrared to kind of clear out all the haze from any sort of images we're getting. So if we're looking at cells, for instance, that we want to have a better, clearer contrast on, we can use shortwave infrared to get rid of any of the extra that we don't need. Some other trends in machine vision. One of the biggest trends that you'll see right now is all about speed. So we have multiple new interfaces coming out nowadays. We have 10 gig E, which is 10 times faster than standard gig vision. Coax Express 2.0, which is an incredibly fast uh, interface. And all of this is making increased bandwidth for data processing. So we have all the speed, we have to have better data processing to make sure that we're actually able to utilize it. Along with speed, we're pushing more and more resolutions. Last year, I was at the Vision Show, and one of the craziest things I saw actually was a massive 60 plus megapixel camera that also was very high speed. And with this combination of technology, we're just seeing resolution and speed being pushed faster and faster than it's ever gotten before with larger resolutions. With all that, we have to be able to process this. IPCs, computers, and everything that's processing these images need to be updating and following this curve of speed and resolution. And all of this, honestly, leads into some of the biggest buzzwords in the market today, which is artificial intelligence. So with all of these processing and all of this data that we're getting, the biggest drive for this is really driving machine learning and AI. And in order to achieve this level of artificial intelligence, we have to have data being processed over long periods of time, teaching softwares how to actually do this. All of these leaps that we're seeing with AI and machine vision, they're being driven by the amount of data that we can get. So the more data that software companies can achieve, the more we can do in the AI field for machine vision. One of the examples of this in life sciences is new types of software utilizing AI to help analyze those cells and samples like we talked about earlier before they have to go to a lab technician or medical professional. If we can teach a software to identify cancerous cells, for, in for instance, this can help the field to utilize those human resources more for what we're good at, right? We're never going to teach a AI, well, actually, I was going to say teach an AI to do art, but I guess we've seen that that's actually maybe not the case now. So we can't teach an AI all the things that humans can do, but we can use the AIs to make the burden on humans less. So what are some of the common machine vision applications we have in life sciences today? For the pharmaceuticals industry, this is going to be OCR, optical code recognition or optical code verification serialization track and trace, label and seal verification, which we'll show an example of in a minute, and liquid level detection, right? In lab automation and diagnostics, we see vision guided robotics, sample characterization, instrument prep verification, right? Making sure that a prep area is ready before the human or the robot goes over to do something. You wanna make sure you have your pipette in the right place, you've got your scalpel there, is everything where it's supposed to be. In medical imaging, diagnos diagnosis and analysis, blood flow, microscopy, retina inspection, anything that you're taking an image of and want to analyze, we can use machine vision to do it smarter. And then lastly, just an example for medical devices, we can have UDI compliance, quality inspection, and of course, that amazing word traceability, specific around barcode verification, uh, barcode reading and label verification. So we are going to go over some examples of applications and some medical techni technology case studies here in just a second. We're going to talk about medical imaging, a look at medical devices, and some label and inspection. The first one I want to briefly talk about is in medical imaging, and this is an application called microscopy. It's a very simple application to understand. Basically, you replace the human eyes on a microscope with a camera. You integrate the camera directly into the microscope system, which allows easy viewing of the slides, right? Instead of having to put your face up against a microscope, you're able to utilize a monitor, a software, or I've even seen some setups where it's a 
80 inch TV that's running 4K through this microscope that's providing a massive quality image for the lab tech to be able to really analyze and look at those cells. By utilizing machine vision and cameras to do this, we're actually lowering the stress of the user, allowing for that person to have more efficient work in the long term. I don't know how many of you have ever used a microscope, but the longer you press your eyes against the microscope, the more insane you slowly become. So really lowering that stress of not having to try to always dial in the microscope and having a camera do that work for the tech can really help with long-term efficiency. And the more feature-rich softwares that we have nowadays, we can actually utilize the camera to do some of that work like we've talked about, right? The preliminary cancer cell detection. The next one I wanna talk about is quality inspection and we'll have some really cool examples here as well as a case study, I believe in just a second. So label and seal verification, this requires really the ability to detect if a product was incorrectly made. The big and huge thing for this is really in pharmaceutical. And the reason for that is we want to make sure that products are safe to use and they are the expected quality. When I have a headache, I expect that that bottle of ibuprofen or Motrin that I'm using is safe to use, right? I want to take them and I want to know that those are not going to harm me. Those have been produced correctly. Their seal is there and everything is okay with that product. Utilizing machine vision, we can help to protect consumers from defective and potentially dangerous products. And it allows companies to automate that detection without having to use manual labor. And when we use manual labor, not only is it inefficient, but it also is more prone to error, right? Someone working on an assembly line checking seals for eight hours is going to make a lot more mistakes than a camera that can run for thousands upon thousands of hours before it even needs to be reset, right? So this is huge for machine vision. And this is a really good example of how it works. So. First, we have an object coming down a line where they are inspected to make sure the contents and the labels have been correctly placed inside the box. Then later down the line, once automate, some sort of automated process has been done to seal the box, the vision system is then being utilized again to check and confirm that that seal is correctly there. Then once the product leaves the assembly line, we know that those were properly placed and the seal on the container is secure. So if a customer gets a bottle of ibuprofen and that seal is not secure, they know not to use that product, return it and get a new one because something happened after the factory. So the next one here, collaborative laboratory automation. So with collaborative laboratory automation, one of the best examples of this is vision guided robotics. We see robots being used more and more inside of labs around the world. And these robots need to be able to work alongside people. You don't want the robot knocking out Steve, the lab tech. That robot has to be able to work with them and make sure that it's a safe environment. Collaborative robots really are going to allow for work inside of smaller labs because they can do more tasks with less people and a less amount of space required. Carts like we see to the left here can be utilized to move robots from station to station while they are doing very small, delicate tasks without disrupting the workflow in the environment. So you might have a mobile robot with a cart attached to it, with a collaborative robot on top of it, moving around a lab, moving samples where they need to be while a human does the more required tasks that they need to do. A good case study of this is an example of looking at built-in vision on the Omron TM right here. And what we're doing is we're moving something around the lab with that TM to then bring it to the techs as they do their work. An operator can look at a part and determine if it was made properly, if it was given to them in the case that it should be, right? The next example is high-speed code reading. So when we talk about high-speed code reading, this is where we go back to traceability. And we really wanna talk about 1D and 2D barcode reading and compliance. Companies want to be able to just confirm that the product that is coming down the line is what it's supposed to be. Barcodes will allow for product and supply chain tracking, regulatory requirements, and good quality control. 
Utilizing machine vision, we can actually scan multiple products at a time and even accomplish more tasks than only barcode reading for companies' applications. So for instance, in our F430 microhawk cameras, we can utilize those to both read barcodes and complete vision jobs with a single product. And an example of this is actually right here. So this is actually inside of our vision proof of concept in our Dallas proof of concept center. And what we can see is an Omron F430 microhawk is being utilized to not just check the barcode, but to also check the fill level of the sample. So we have one task on the software measuring the liquid level. This could be for, a, for instance, a sample tube of blood going through a lab. And then the other part of the job is verifying that barcode is correct. So maybe that barcode says that's supposed to come from John Denver's doctor's office in Colorado. Oh, that's that barcode is correct. The fill level is correct. What we expect. Good to go. Right. This is a very real example of how we're using vision to accomplish traceability as well as a vision task in the same product. A use of this in pharma, so a little case study here. So this was passing through 3,600 units every hour being checked and verified for label inspection. Really the challenge here was to avoid unintentional machine stops and read errors. We wanna make sure that this is being done correctly every time. In this case, we utilize the FHV7 to verify the batch and expiration using optical code verification. And the smart camera in this case was able to provide both the lighting, the lensing, and the image processing for those enhanced inspections. Utilizing the multicolor lighting on the FHV7 alongside the 12 megapixel high resolution camera, we only needed a single FHV7 camera to successfully read these labels without a good label being read correct incorrectly. So this is a huge step in being able to help these pharma companies be able to identify and inspect their products efficiently. So what do I want you all to take away from this presentation? You know, there's a lot of applications in life sciences, but really what I want you all to remember is that machine vision and life science combines to provide lab technicians, researchers, and scientists within advanced technologies the resources to help people. When we can innovate in machine vision, we can make new leaps forward in the medical fields. If we get new types of visual spectrums to help inspect cells better, we can help make people live longer, prosper better, right? Using machine vision as within automation, we can empower people. We don't want to use automation and machine vision to replace people. We want to make sure that to the work of the machine goes the work of the machine, and to man goes the thrill of creation, right? We want to make sure that man can do what man can do while machines are doing tasks that maybe we want them to do more efficiently. Utilizing machine vision, this is really the key to moving towards that lab of the future we talked to in the beginning. The best way to get there is utilizing our cameras, our technologies to help make everything smarter in our labs. With that, uh, just a really big thank you again to Matt for the opportunity to present to y'all. And if there's any questions, we can take them now, Matt. Awesome. We do we do have a couple questions in the Q&A, and I was also a uh, direct message one question, and we'll leave that one for last. Um, the first one comes from uh, Joel Foch. It's uh, in reference to many application categories that you mentioned for machine vision. Do you have a repository of those applications to help us and customers generate ideas for improvement? So we do have resources on our Omron Automation website. You can actually find our Life Sciences Playbook, which can showcase some of the great uses within Omron for Life Sciences as a whole. I also would recommend using this uh, presentation as kind of a stepping stone, right? Oftentimes with machine vision, something I tell people is, hey, there's pretty much a camera or something similar to a camera being used in every technology right now. So when we go to see customers, when we go talk to people, a very simple question to ask them is, are you using cameras? Are you using anything like that today? And you'll find the more you ask that question, the more you're going to unearth opportunities within machine vision that you didn't even know were existed. But great starting point this presentation and go to the Omron website and utilize the Omron Life Sciences playbook there. 
Perfect. I uh, I shared a few links to that directly under his response in the Q&A for those who are referencing it. Um, otherwise, I can lay it in the chat if people would prefer to be there. Um, I have uh, another question from Joel. Uh, in reference to the emerging trends, non-visible spectrums, AI, et cetera, uh, do you find that your handling processing with first party Omron software or do you go to third party for those applications? So we can use Omron software to do it. Um, we actually will be releasing a shortwave infrared camera later this year. So that will be our first foray into shortwave infrared. With that, we will be able to use Omron softwares to do it. The good news is if a company does require a third party software, they can actually utilize our Omron Centec industrial cameras with any third party software that's GennyCam compliant. So we will have GennyCam compliance. So if there is a software they would like to use, we can, but we would of course recommend Omron softwares as the first step. Okay. Um, and then can you uh, can you clarify specifically what Omron software you would choose just so I can provide a link? Yeah, we so we haven't, as I said, we haven't launched the product just yet. We've had testing with the Omron AutoVision platform that is going quite positively though. Okay. Um, this one might just be me and clients it's coming from me. <laughs> uh, are there case studies that can be referenced for cobots in a lab setting specifically? Um, not necessarily in a med tech adjacent market like med devices, but in a situation where they're in a lab. I know specifically I can't find a ton on the TM and I know that the LD sells, um, uh, sells ESD skins that you can add on that can make it. Mm -hmm. even from so I'm not the robot guy. Um, we have a great PM team for the robots at Omron. I do know we have case studies. What I'd recommend is taking a look again on the Omron Automation website. Under the life sciences, we have a lot of success stories and case studies listed, as well as though um, under the actual robot pages on the website, you can find success stories as well. Specific ones, unfortunately, I do not know exactly though. Sure. Um, just going to uh, state, uh, please submit the questions in the Q&A and I can ask them for you. Otherwise, I can do it on a per basis. If you'd like to raise your hand and ask the question yourself, I can unmute your mic. Otherwise, you can throw it in the Q&A section directly. I'm going to go and shunt one question in before someone raises their hand, but just throwing that out there. Um, and then this is the last one that was direct message to me. Um, there are a wide variety of options in the Centec lineup, but not a lot of first party integrations for those cameras. Uh, what softwares do customers typically find success with when using Centec cameras? So that's a, actually a really great question. So, and one important distinction, so I want to make sure, so we're talking about, when we talk about these Centec cameras, they're really now referred to as the Omron Centec cameras, right? They're fully integrated into the Omron environment. And one of the big steps that we've made into that is the Omron Centec, both the GigiVision and the USB 3 Vision cameras can work with Omron AutoVision. So that is, of course, our first recommendation is to utilize AutoVision where you can. If you have not used AutoVision, it is an incredible software. It's extremely easy to use. Um, I feel like most people could learn how to use it very simply. And that is something that we can utilize alongside our industrial camera line. The other good thing about the Omron Centec industrial cameras is since the GigiVision, USB 3, and the Coax Express cameras are all GennyCam compliant, if we need to use a third-party software, as long as that third-party software is also GennyCam compliant, it can work with it. On top of that, we also offer the Omron Centec software development kit. So if we come to a company that actually wants to develop software themselves and be able to create their own interface or whatever they want to do with it, they can utilize the Omron Centec SDK to do that themselves if they have the expertise. But the simple answer is if we're using USB 3 or GigiVision, the first software that we would always recommend is the AutoVision software platform. <laughs> 